This video is brought to you by my patrons on Patreon. I'd like to give a huge shout out to Anina, Rachel, Clay, Mariah, Maddie, Lilith, Idalis, Dre, Thomas, Tara, Zoe, Zuzia, Ainsley, Sabine, Devalina, Jimma, Bailey, Azzy, Jacqueline, Monica, Jordan, Green, Lizzie, Brenda, Willow, Danny, Blessing Avery, Maddie, Alexia, B, Max, T, Taylor, M, and Lovely. If you would like to support this channel and get access to weekly audios and weekly novel readings and other interesting perks, the link is in the description. <clears throat> uh, welcome to Le Chateau d'Arnaud. I'm so excited that you're here. Uh, thank God you're here, because if you weren't here, then you'd be somewhere else, and we have such a wonderful night planned for tonight. I know, I'm excited. Sue me for being excited, okay? I don't know, the, the last date yesterday went fantastic, and now we're here. And I am not working, and you're not working, and I don't know, I, I, I spent like all day preparing this, so I'm very, very excited. I'm sorry you couldn't go to the pumpkin patch with me. I know that was a last minute ask, but here we are. I hope you entrust me that I got the best pumpkins that were there for us. The meatiest boys. The boys who are ready to be carved into something gorgeous. Our own wonderful creative creations, if you will. Yeah, no, of course you can get a hug. Come here. God, that sounded so cringy. I, I, I tried to play it off like kind of cool, but it absolutely did not work at all, did it? All right, good. At least my suspicions are confirmed. Um, so uh, this is the, the apartment. Uh, this is it. So the bathroom is right there. Uh, and then if you go through the bathroom that way, the bedroom connects to it. Uh, obviously, you can see right here is the kitchen, uh, and there is the living room. And if you will come follow me into the living room, I will give you a grand tour of what we will be doing. Did you did you make it here okay, though? I, I may or may not have checked, like, the route, and I saw that there was kind of some traffic on 36th. Was that, did, I, did that, like, affect your drive at all? No? Good. Okay. All right. Awesome. Oh, yeah, sorry, I kind of was just like, you're here, and I got kind of caught up in the fact that you're here, maybe a little bit, uh, <laughs> maybe got a little bit flustered, perhaps, but uh, don't tell my date that. Uh, anyways, so uh, here we have m the blanket of all blankets. Now, this blanket, let me tell you something about this blanket. It has been through a lot. It has been through hell and back. The amount of art and crafts that has been completed on this blanket is too many for me to count. This is a generational blanket. This is a blanket that has been handed down from my grandparents to my parents to me when I got this apartment. And they said to me, hey, we have used this whenever we needed to paint the walls, whenever we had kids over to do arts and crafts, whenever anything that involves mess comes into play, we have used this blanket. And I don't think there could possibly be a better time to use this blanket than getting pumpkin guts all over it. Uh, would you agree? Okay, good, 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 good. So we have the blanket here, the blanket of ceremony, the, bl the blanket of tradition. Uh, and as you can see, now you're getting your first look at the two jack-o'-lanterns we will be making, these pumpkins are meaty, meaty boys. They have a lot of good guts inside of them that we will be using uh, and throwing away, obviously. But also, I was told, I was told, and I don't know if this is something that they could, like, prove or not, but I'm I'm not going to take a farmer. I'm, like, the farmer was the one who said it, and I'm not going to say, oh, are you sure about that? To a farmer who knows infinitely more things about Vegeta vegetables and vegetation than I do. Uh, but they, the, the farmer told me when I picked out these two pumpkins that they have a lot of seeds in them. And as you know, I promised you some pumpkin seeds. So we will be getting those and making those as a little snack for our horror movie night that we will also be commencing on because you confirmed with me that that sounds like a good plan when we had our phone call. 
that I liked very much. Uh, <laughs> I am not blushing. Maybe you're blushing. Or maybe you're seeing red because you're so upset about the jack-o'-lanterns. Hopefully the pumpkins are good. Are they good? <sighs> okay, good, good, good. Good to know. Good to hear. Good to hear. Good to hear. All right. <laughs> so then also we have the TV. And you may notice a menu of sorts. Perhaps laying out in front of the pumpkins. And that menu uh, at the Chateau d'Arnaud. Yes, that is my last name. In case you were wondering why I said it twice. Um, has all of the nearest places that deliver. We're not doing Uber Eats. Because I'm really sick of paying like the taxes on that. I know I should because of how much I do Uber Eats, get Uber One, and then I wouldn't have to worry about all of those like fees that they do on there. But the delivery places don't do fees, they just do taxes. So, no, yeah, no, really, I, I swear. I, I know that's like a crazy thing because I've had people from the city come here and tell me how crazy that is, but you know. Uh, uh, I digress. In this menu, you will find four options uh, of restaurants and the type of food associated with them. Uh, would you like me to show you the menu and read it off to you, or would you like to take care of it yourself? Oh, of course, I do love feeling like a little bit of a host. So, <laughs> and you know, as you can tell, I'm very theatrical, as you can tell by the beret on my head right now and the little red nose paint that I have on, which I don't know why I did that, uh, but I thought it was a good idea, and, and maybe it's not a good idea, but I did it anyways. All right, so um, we have, we have molcajete, which is Mexican. We have Chang's, which is Chinese. We have Luciano's, which is Italian, and we have... <laughs> Barry's Bar and Grill, which is American. All four places that I have had delivered to this house and are the respective best of their specific uh, type of food. So, what are you feeling? Mm hmm. Okay, well. A woman after my own heart, surely, because uh, I know I haven't told you this, but we're going to learn a lot about each other tonight. Mexican just so happens to be my favorite food. Yep. So how do you feel about splitting? All right, this is about this is about to get crazy. And I'm not you can obviously look at their menu. I, I can pull it up on my phone or whatever. But if you want to trust me, uh, they have. And, and they don't have this for a lot of people, only people that frequently visit their restaurant. Um, it's called their Nachos Party Platter. And it's like a catering-sized nacho platter, but it's only like 18 bucks. I swear to God, I literally, and, and let me explain this to you because because uh, that obviously that sounds heinous. Eighteen dollars is just like a normal nacho tray nowadays. Um, I was at this place from the beginning. This place was actually a small little uh, hole in the wall place when it first opened up, and I went there, and they would have like I could get nachos to go, and 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 because I'm gluten free, uh, those are the best things that you can get at a Mexican place uh, that those into tostadas and like taquitos. But anyways, um, it's almost like a Chipotle. You go there and they make it for you and then they heat it up and it, it literally takes like 10 minutes and it's so much better quality than Chipotle. And because their food is amazing and all of their ingredients are fresh, they eventually move down the street to an actual restaurant. And because they remembered me from the hole in the wall days, they give me like discounts on stuff. So yeah, uh, would that sound interesting to you? I promise it's great and it's got like all the toppings. Let me, beef, ground beef, we do either ground beef or chicken. Okay, good, I'm, I'm more of a ground beef person. On my nachos specifically, jalapenos, cheese, four cheese blend, mind you. We got beans, we got guacamole, 
we got pico de gallo we got sour cream and all of that comes together to make a wonderful beautiful nacho party platter okay i am glad you are down because i'm gonna be honest with you may or may not have had a craving for it but i wouldn't have let you know that if you had chosen one of the other ones all right let me let me get the call in real quick okay ba, 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 ba. Hello, Louise. Uh, <laughs> it is Colin. Uh, I'd like to place an order for delivery. Yes, that is the correct address. I'm feeling like the nacho party platter today. And also, uh, if you wouldn't mind, uh, let's throw in a side of the churros. No, the mini churros, not the regular churros. Yeah, that's my bad. Yeah, that'll be it. All right. Uh, sounds good. All right. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your night, Luis. All right. Bye. And the order is placed and it will be here within like half an hour. That's usually how it happens. They always say half an hour to 45 minutes, but it always comes in about half an hour for me. So shall we uh, quickly uh, decide on a movie and then we will commence with our pumpkin carving. All right, all right, all right. So, how, what what decade are we feeling, first of all? Are we feeling 80s, 90s, 2000s, or 2010s? Okay, all right, okay, okay. How do we feel about, drum roll please. Mandy. Okay, Mandy is a film. And you know what? I'm just gonna ask you this question and if you, you answer yes to this question, we're gonna play it, okay? All right. How do you feel about batshit Nick Cage performances? <laughs> a woman after my own heart. Well, we will absolutely be playing Mandy then, uh, because from your reaction, you have not seen it. So uh, uh, get ready for a wonderful time. All right, and play. And shall we now sit down on the blanket and watch the movie and carve the pumpkins and uh, talk? All right, uh, here is the knife I've already done the the labor of slicing open the tops as you can see uh i have not yet lobotomized uh the pumpkins but i have sliced open the top so you will have easy access to gut the pumpkins yeah i know i i i guess it could be kind of boring just doing this and you know watching the movie but i don't know i i, I think it could be fun it could be kind of like peaceful and sweet and cute and you know, uh, couple-y. I know we're not a couple yet, but it could be couple-y, right? No, yeah, no, that does make sense. We are here, and this is a second date technically, so we probably should be getting to know each other some more. So I'm, I don't know, I'm down with that. You know what, actually, and that really does make sense because at the restaurant, we could not stop talking about how good the food was. Like, of course, at the beginning, we had the awkward little intro thing and we talked a little bit, but we never really got around to the, the, the question questions. So, yeah, sure, I'm down. I'm down to, like, uh, you know, do some cutting, watch some horror, and uh, get to know each other a little bit more. That sounds good. Now, 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 you're the one who says this, and I have to be the one ready with a question immediately? <laughs> if I had a red flag, I would pull it out uh, and, and, and throw it at you. Like the, they do in the, you, you remember those, like, that dumb TikTok trend where, where the, the couples, the couple, oh my God, don't, uh, no, 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 I'm not going to get into how much I hate, like, couple TikToks and, like, YouTube shorts or anything like that. You definitely don't want to hear me do that. Um. Oh, you you do want to hear me do that. Uh, all right, sure. 
You, but I get to ask you a question after this, okay? I, I had one in mind, maybe. I definitely didn't. I'll be thinking about it while I give go on this little rant, okay? Okay. Uh, so I hate, like, overall, the idea of most couple channels uh, on TikTok and on YouTube. Uh, they are, like, the worst for one reason. There, there are few and far between that are authentic and genuine or give off any sort of like real couple vibes whatsoever uh there are so many where the reactions are just clearly staged and so just extra all of the time and it is incredibly frustrating for me because you're setting this example of a relationship to your younger probably impressionable audience uh that it's always going like that all the time and that's just simply not the case uh and then you'll see if they ever have released these breakup videos uh they're like oh you know they're all down in the dumps and everyone's like oh i don't believe in true love anymore and all that bull uh, and it's like, hey, you know what? If you had portrayed these like realistic relationship standards to your young and impressionable audience, they wouldn't have these like super high expectations. I'm not saying you you, you want high expectations, but but there's a level of just like fakeness and constant positivity that is not good for young developing minds and to expect that from a relationship is just not realistic uh and they, they always do it man they always do it and, and 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 if it wasn't so blatantly fake that would be another thing because you have to imagine as these channels continue on and as these people grow up there's got to be some sort of like animosity towards these channels that these people have grown up and watched and then they realize oh this isn't actually how real people act my entire perception of relationships as a young developing mind was just not true and in movies it's it, it's different when it's in movies because movies are specifically established forms of entertainment that are kind of utilized in this very like uh mystic kind of magical realism way uh that it's pretty clear that they're not real uh but youtube channels are real people who are pretending to give you their real lives even though uh the reactions to whatever happens is just not authentic and very 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 frustrating uh, but that's just my little spiel on that. So now that I have probably embarrassed you or embarrassed myself. Uh, really? Do you really mean that? That's that. Thank you. I, I don't know. I really care about young people and them having the, the Internet not corrupting them or portraying false standards. I think it's very important because the because we are our our children are raised on the internet generation so consistently now and and and, and from the moment they're that they're toddlers basically. Uh sure they don't have access uh to or as much agency as toddlers, but they're still watching these things and some parents and don't have an understanding of technology to the level where they don't know about YouTube kids and they just kind of give their kids an iPad and they can do whatever they want on it. So I don't know. Uh, I know that that's a small percentage of what's wrong with with the internet in the way that it's raising kids, but I don't know. I, I feel relatively strong about it, obviously, or I wouldn't have just gone on like a three minute rant. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, you can, you can, uh, I, 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 no, 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 you don't get to ask, hey, no, you don't get to ask me that, I get to ask you a question now, because you let me go on that rant, and you agreed to it, you agreed to it, so we're gonna do it now, um, I guess my, my question for you is, what, if you could be one place right now that you have been 
in your life. And when I say one place, I mean the exact moment in time, the exact location, the exact age. If you could go back and I guess relive continuously one moment in your life or one like it can and it can be any level of moment it can be a year it can be literally like a day an hour of a day any any sort any, any time frame is valid what would it be Wow, that is like really, really, really sweet. Uh, were were you like before that? Were you were you like really close to your dad? Well, I know that this is your first time bringing him up, and uh, I can't for sure. I I don't know him, and I never met him. But I can say that he sounded amazing from the way that you described him. Yeah, no, really. I, I mean it. He sounded like a really, really sweet guy. And I can definitely tell that <laughs> he is a uh, part of where you got your kind of charisma from, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. All right. Uh I guess it looks like we have almost completely gutted our pumpkins. Uh, I will take care of the seeds in there now. But here is uh, your little knife that you are going to carve with, with if you're okay with that. Uh, I don't have any bigger knives uh, because I, I feel like that would just be too overkill. So, yeah. Um, and I guess it is your turn to ask me a question now. <laughs> All right, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, family for family, you know. Um, huh. I'm not really close to my f family, or I guess as close as sometimes I want to be, sometimes I don't want to be. As I told you, my sister and uh, my niece are like about a couple hours out from here, and they're really the only people that I see or talk to on a consistent basis basis i really 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 love them to death and uh her husband is nice too he's he's a sweet guy uh, but i've never really connected with him on a level other than them you know what i mean i'm not saying that i couldn't possibly in the future but uh, i don't really foresee it happening uh i don't think uh also um my family has a lot of turmoil with mental health and it's a really it's a really hard thing to navigate because I know that when they get mad at me or going through one of their episodes or uh, when my mom who has BPD uh, starts getting mad at me for what I think is no reason, and my dad, uh, who is an alcoholic, uh, starts hating the sauce a little too much and says some stuff that probably should have remained un remained unsaid. Uh, it's it's so difficult, right? Because I know it's not them, and I know that the people they are are people that I love and respect and care about. But simultaneously, that does not take away the fact that they are who they are. And they do, they, they are attached to those mental illnesses. And as much as, as I hate to be this way, and I tried not to be this way for a very long time until it literally kind of shook me to my core, uh, I can't put my mental health at risk when other f in order to care for other people and in and, and whether their mental health 
problems that directly affect me. I don't know if that makes sense and I don't know if that makes me a selfish person, but at a point in my life, I had to choose me and I did. And I don't regret it. I don't know if that makes me sound like a bad person. And obviously I do go see them for holidays and stuff, but uh, naturally I don't really like the vibe of LA. It's a little too fast paced for me and um, dirty as hell. But part of the reason I moved across the country is I really was having problems dealing with them. And being in that toxic environment where you don't know what day, what a day will be like. You don't know when, what type of storm or calm you're walking into. And, and, and when you're in a situation that seems like a calm, you don't know when a storm will hit. Uh, and if you're in a situation that seems like a storm, you don't know when the calm will hit. And as selfish as that sounds, that level of instability uh, kind of just got to be a little too much for me. And they know I love them. And I've had this conversation with them. And they told me that they understand. But naturally, when they're in a bad state of mind, they do tend to uh, guilt me. Uh, about it <laughs> so yeah I have a very complex relationship with my family but you would absolutely love my sister and my niece they are the sweetest human beings on earth and as I told you the, the husband's nice too just haven't really connected with them <laughs> nothing like bonding over family trauma right that's the, isn't that exactly what people usually do on the on the second date? First date is you know just getting like getting to know each other. Second date is bonding over fa family trauma, and third date is sex. That's that's how like the progression goes, right? Okay, good, 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 good. That's exactly what Steve Harvey told me. So I'm I'm glad that you match up with. Him. <laughs> I don't know. Didn't you make that like dating guy that was terribly misogynistic or some shit i don't know wasn't that a thing yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. all right uh anyways that is enough about my family trauma and your family trauma let's try some questions that don't involve that that are like maybe more simplistic uh <laughs> and less open-ended uh okay so huh if you could go to any concert right now, I'm not going to say dead or alive because I think that's too much of a hypothetical. Like, for example, if this whole relationship dating thing goes well, I can't buy you tickets to a Michael Jackson concert. I, you know, I can't buy, buy you tickets to that. Uh, but I can buy you tickets to like your dream concert of someone who's alive, possibly, perhaps, if that's a thing, maybe. Uh, maybe I'm revealing my, my, my secrets a little too early, but you know, you know, you know, we move on, we move on. <laughs> so yeah, um, what would be your dream concert right now if you could go to one? Any choice, front row, VIP, whatever you want, what would it be? Okay, a classic, a classic, and a very warranted classic at that. <laughs> no, absolutely. Uh, she is the queen bee for a reason, is she not? Now, that's that's a little bit difficult. I wouldn't label myself as a part of the hive because I wouldn't label myself as part of any stand group whatsoever. But I, I will, I will get down to like any era of Beyonce whatsoever. Uh, and I will watch Lemonade on a yearly basis, 1 million percent. <laughs> I don't know if you can do that. Can you do that? Can you do the thing where you just like flip it back on me? You know what? You are absolutely killing it with that jack-o'-lantern. So I will give you a free pass this time. Hmm. That's so, it's such, I can just realize it's such a difficult question. I should have been prepared for it to be flipped around on me. I can, I, uh, 
Uh, you know, I wouldn't even say that this is my favorite artist, but I, and, and, and honestly, it's probably not even an artist that I super, super enjoy. I like them a lot, but I wouldn't go as far as to say, like, I love them, but I think it would be super interesting to witness like the, the ma microcosm of a Taylor Swift concert. Because I would love to be able to understand the level of passion that Swifties feel when they watch her. Because I don't get that. But I feel like being at the Eras Tour front row, absorbing all of that energy, I feel like I would, I would definitely get that. You know? I feel like I would understand completely. Okay, maybe it, maybe it's a little bit of a weird cop out answer, but I gave you one, and it's 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 genuine. So, what more can you ask for than that, huh? <laughs> All right. So, uh, he, our, I think with a little bit more, I am done. Uh, with the base level. I know we can like decorate it with like stickers and stuff like that, but this is the base level that I'm going with. Are you done? Okay. Uh, do, do you, okay. So yours is facing you and mine is facing mine. Do you want to flip them and reveal them at the same time? All right. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, <laughs> yours. We went completely different directions. Yours is adorable. That little button nose. That is so cute. And mine is like terrifying. <laughs> yeah, I, I always like to go with the scariest and most deformed possible jack-o'-lantern uh, because everyone always does like these little cute things. They have this little like jagged smile that works. I want to really provide some nightmares for the children when they come uh, around the apartment and they're trick-or-treating. They'll get really great candy for me, so it'll be worth it. But I, I need a little bit, I need a little bit of traumatization in there. Is that a word? I need a little bit of trauma in there. No, yours looks, uh, your look, yours looks really great. It's adorable. I am, I bet it will do wonders for you when, when the trick-or-treaters come around. Yeah, I think this is going really well too. Although I'm a little surprised that you said that now, but um yeah. Uh <laughs> I uh I I it's so nice to see you in a one-on-one -on -one setting, uh in a place where th that's like private that we can kind of be ourselves completely. Uh, uh, would you like to go steady with me? Okay. <laughs> that is uh, really great news. I didn't know if this was the right time to ask, but it felt like it, right? <laughs> okay. Good. Can we... Uh... I don't want our children to see this, so I'm going to turn it this way. Uh, but um, in order to consummate this uh, going steady, do you mind if I uh, kiss you? And of course, interrupted once again. But to be fair, is there a better interruption to making out with your newly minted significant other than a giant nacho party platter? Did I do something wrong? All right, I'm going. I'll be right back. Hello. Uh, yes, here is the money. There it is. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, have a wonderful rest of your night, okay? All right. I'm so sorry, <gasps> And... Ah, there we go. The Nacho Party 
platter from Molcajete. <laughs> oh, you thought I was joking, were you? You you thought I was joking about something as important as the nacho party platter. Well, no. It is literally bigger than basically my arm. So I don't know about you, but I am I'm ready to dig into this. But before we partake in the endeavor of absolutely bodying the entirety of this platter, I do have one thing to propose we do beforehand. I think we should give each other one more kiss, because who knows if we're going to want to kiss each other after we have jalapeno breath. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sounds good to me, too. All right, let us dig in. So... Generally, this thing takes about like 30 minutes to get down, and we are just approaching the best part of Mandy. So uh, let's take this to the couch and, and really get into it, shall we? Oh, I'm so glad you liked it. Yeah, this is like one of my favorite Nicolas Cage performances, and I just love how insane it gets. You are not going to believe that one of the fight scenes at the end. When I originally saw this in the theaters, there was cheering that happened in the theater when the scene happened. You're never going to.